Brethren, welcome to the Thank Goodness It's Friday video blog. This week we're bringing to you a couple of interviews. One from Phil Fisher, representing the Minis Bay Lodge, who will be updating everybody on the excellent fundraising that they have been doing for charity during this period of lockdown and how they hope it will help with their recruitment drive. We will also be hearing from Matt Jury and his lovely wife Kelly and a lady called Jill Orman representing the Rising Sun Domestic Abuse Charity. But first of all, let's talk about what's happening around the province. Well, of course, this week has been dominated by the snow for uh, the vast majority who've been lucky to actually see it, uh, which will be lasting up until the weekend when uh, on Sunday, uh, they're forecasting warmer weather to come in. We have the Bake Off, which has been happening from over in Medway and is gradually been spilling uh, across the province. Uh, but I'm sure that uh, if you find yourself with nothing to do during the lockdown, you can get out your baking tins and actually have, have a go. I'm sure there's lots of people on Facebook who would love to be able to see your efforts. And I'm sure one or two people might, ha might have a few comments to make, rest assured. On the 17th of this month at 7.30 p.m., um, Union Lodge are holding their Zoom meeting called Not a Masonic Lodge Night. Very interestingly, they have a, a, a speaker from a lodge in Florida talking about charity and how it's done in America. They also have a guest speaker from the Grand Lodge of Ireland who will be talking about the Irish Constitution. The day after, on the 18th at 7 p.m., the Virtual Lodge of Instruction is being held by Graham Chisnell, and they have a speaker on Scottish Freemasonry, and they are also having a fireside chat with the Assistant Provincial Grand Master, David Alexander, who, as you are probably aware, leaves office this coming April, having been in post for four years. So lots of interesting things. So let's go and have a chat with Phil Fisher from the Minis Bay Lodge on the subject of fundraising. Phil, would you like to tell everybody what uh, the lodge has been up to? Yes, certainly. Minis Bay Lodge 8496 has for the last five years been working very hard for local charities. One in particular is Louis Helping Hands. And over those last five years, one of our members, John Matthews, has walked a considerable distance being sponsored, of course, and also he has invited other people to walk with him who has also been sponsored and has raised a considerable sum of money for that particular charity. Also, if the conditions allow, it will also have another walk this year, which will be approximately 21 miles. And um, I believe from the last communication I had from John Matthews, he has enough members to go with him on the walk. He has 30 other people, not necessarily all Freemasons, I will add, but they're all being sponsored and hopefully that money will go to very good local charities. Other charities have also benefited from the generosity of the members of Minis Bay Lodge. Going back a couple of years, because of the pandemic, I can't talk about 2020 as such, but in 2020, we did give a thousand pound to a local company that, that works from Minis Bay, who manufactured face masks for the national health and for local people to purchase. Um, and also in 2020, we were able to give a lump sum of money to the children of the Chernobyl disaster. But going back to 2018-19, various other charities have also benefited 
from the generosity of Minis Bay Lodge. Uh, other than Lewis Helping Hands, there's been Mencap, there's been Anthony Noland, and we go from whatever the master decides which lodge is going to, which charity, sorry, is going to benefit from that. And then we set out that year to raise that sort of money. Hopefully, with the help of Joe Public or yourselves, we raise a considerable sum. We also use gift aid envelopes where if we put the gift aid money in, we can then claim back from the government, i.e. Uh, the England Revenue, 25%. So our generosity is exceeded by another 25%. Hopefully, when we all get back to working again, we will start again with golf days, pigeon, clay pigeon shoots. I've mentioned charity walks. We also have charity evenings where we have quiz nights. We have ladies functions where we also raise a lot of money from raffles, etc. Well, Phil, uh, the, from the sound of it, I mean, Mini Spay Lodge is very, very active um, in doing things for charity, and it sounds absolutely brilliant. And uh, obviously, you're able to make a lot of difference to many people's lives. And um, it sounds like as well that you've, the lodge has actually sort of um, got its head screwed on, particularly around the gift aid envelope, which you rightly say is 25% um, back from the inland revenue. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's a good point to make to, you know, the brethren that even in lockdown, whilst lockdown has actually sort of affected many, many charities income, uh, you're able to, through your efforts, uh, able to support them um, nonetheless. So that is to be applauded. Phil, that's a quick sort of canter through, really. Uh, I understand that you're also getting an article or you've written the article to go to your local press. Uh, and what are you hoping from that, Phil? Well, to be perfectly frank, the article has been published. We have put out telephone numbers where we're hoping to get Joe Public to, especially the people that are dubious about Freemasonry, to ask all the questions of our membership officer and our liaison officer so that they we can ask, answer any questions that they may have truthfully and then if they're more interested we can go through the procedures of vetting them and making them become members i will also add although it possibly shouldn't be we have lady masons so if there are any wives girlfriends that are interested I'm sure we can put you in the right direction for that. During that interview, you heard Phil talk about a charity called Louis Helping Hands. That is an amazing children's charity. Um, and I think it's probably worthwhile just actually playing a very short video uh, about the charity. In December 2015, the Royal School for Deaf Children in Margate closed unexpectedly. This left Sarah's son Louis and many other children without a suitable school placement that could meet their complex medical and physical requirements. The nearest school with suitable facilities to meet these imperative needs is over 100 miles away. From this, Sarah and Louis's godmother Tanya created Louis Helping Hands Charity and Sarah then went on to self-fund and establish the Llewellyn School and Nursery. Combined, they provide holistic therapies and specialist equipment to ensure the children have every opportunity to achieve key milestones in their development. At the Llewellyn School, the curriculum-based activities promote skills for life by enhancing the children's communication, physical abilities, emotional needs, cognitive abilities and independence. 
We've even been approached by other counties for placements and are presently supporting our first out-of-county child. However, we are no longer able to expand and develop. This is not due to the lack of volunteers or enthusiasm, but a lack of space. Due to high demand, we have outgrown our current premises, which are based in an annex of Sarah's family home, and we are no longer able to accept and help new children from our ever-growing waiting list. We have been offered a fantastic opportunity at Quex Park Estates to develop a small, purpose-built, independent school and nursery. This will allow us to continue to offer much needed help and support to existing children, their families and new placements. This hub will be a unique offering and will bring together our disabled community in South East Kent and will provide desperately needed social, educational, play and respite provision within an inclusive, beautiful and welcoming environment. However, we need your help to move forward and ensure that our current and future children can enjoy the high level of support and dedication they so rightly deserve. But I'm sure you will agree what an absolute fantastic charity. Now over to Matt Jury to talk about what's been going on with the Rising Sun domestic violence or domestic abuse charity. Matt, start us off with the story. So during lockdown one, um, back at the beginning of last year, um, our provincial grandmaster for the province of East Kent uh, was kind enough to release some money. Um, and it was to go towards projects and charities that we felt needed our support. Um, being charity steward at group four, I often get, get asked to, to assist with certain charities, etc. But in this instance, I thought I'd ask my wife if she knew of a charity that would benefit uh, and, and obviously do good with the money that we could potentially give them. Um, so Kelly uh, um, obviously went away to uh, a game of netball that evening um, and spoke to her friends uh, and her team during that game about the potential of us supporting a charity that they may bring to the table. And literally the rest is history. So kind of what you're saying, Matt, is that Kelly's actually done all the hard work for you really. <laughs> and um, so- Not uh, quite what I'm saying, Richard, but yes, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> okay, so, so let's hear from Kelly. Kelly. Hi. So yeah, so, with, so when Matt asked us about the, um, uh, who to put forward for these, this donation. Um, I've been in the same netball team for over 20 years and they're very familiar with Matt being in uh, the Masons and have come themselves to different fundraising events and bits and pieces. So um, they know that we do, you know, we, put, you know, we do a lot. Um, and we put it through to the netball girls to say, you know, look, has anyone got any charities in mind or that's close to them that they, they feel um, would benefit uh, this donation and uh, one of the ladies that that plays with us and um, is a foster carer um, and fosters uh, mainly young children um, that have come from either uh, a domestic violence or um, an abuse uh, background so it was something that was quite close to her um, we meet the children they're very part of our friendship group um, and we see them go to so it was a it was a prominent um, and very strong um, thought that we thought, yeah, the, the Rising Sun would be a, a great cause. Okay, Max, uh, I understand also that uh, obviously from the Provincial Grandmasters uh, Disaster Fund, um, you've made the donation and you've gone on to make a further donation. Yes, Richard, that, that's correct. So, so obviously <clears throat> on, the, on the back of that original donation, um, of 750 pounds. Uh, we then got contacted by the province to say that the Masonic Charitable Foundation uh, and the Cornwallis East Kent Freemasons charity would like to donate further money towards domestic abuse charities and asked if I would make contact with Jill uh, and find out who the other beneficiaries would be within the province of East Kent. 
Um, so between Jill and myself, we got a list together of contact names uh, and the names of those services. Um, and then that was then sent through to the, the provincial office. Um, and thankfully, um, a large sum of money was then able to be uh, distributed amongst all those services, which I'm really, really pleased about. Great. So, so Jill, um, what has this money meant to the Rising Sun? Well, for us, it was um, when I took the first call from Matt, we started to have some calls from the community. There'd been a profile. Um, the, our profile was being raised due in the pandemic around domestic abuse. But it's meant that we've been able to adapt our services and sort of still to be able to respond to people's needs. Um, I know Kelly mentioned earlier about children's work and as well as sort of like our adult crisis intervention, a large part of our work is around supporting children. And we've had a really good project going on um, during lockdown and it was able to sort of like to go beyond lockdown too. So um, which is um, being able to support children in their own homes by working with a non-abusive parent and um, sending sort of positive wellbeing worksheets through, then having Zoom sessions as lockdown um, lessons, we were able like to go to the door, have some out of door sessions together. And, um, and it, so it, it's allowed us to adapt programs. And Great. that's kind of one example there. Yeah. yeah. So over the period of the lockdown, um, have you seen domestic abuse cases going up? We initially, um, we have to say that it wasn't always week on week numbers increasing, but what we did notice that for the people that we were supporting and for the families, um, their needs intensified so that they there was much more demand from our support to, to survivors. And then as we've carried on going through various lockdowns and um, then non-lockdowns, um, our numbers have been steadily increasing, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so Matt and Kelly, obviously, thank you for you know, your, your hard work in actually sort of uh, identifying uh, who the beneficiary would be. And obviously, Jill, through uh, the Rising Sun, thank you for your services. Well, brethren, that's it for this week's video blog roundup. And we do hope that you found it interesting. And don't forget, if you have any stories, you have any features that you wish to appear here, then please get in contact with us at comms at ekprovince.co.uk. Likewise, if you would like to advertise on this video blog, um, I'm sure it will be perfectly doable for a small donation towards the 2025 festival. And likewise, just get in contact with us at that same email address. So brethren, take it easy, keep safe, keep well, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>